so welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I've done an actual makeup video. So I'm going to be doing an Ulta haul today because I picked up some goodies over the last couple of weeks. I picked up three of the NYX soft lip creams, and I'm not going to wear them on my lips because I'm having some kind of irritation. But my least favorite would have to be Athens because it's just too light for my skin tone. Like, unless I wear a nude lip liner, I really can't pull it off, and even then, it's kind of a bit of a problem. So it doesn't show up quite as pigmented on my lips, or it does, but because my lips already have a certain amount of pigmentation, this one just isn't absolutely amazing for me, but I'm definitely going to keep using it and trying different combinations. This one right here is my second favorite. It's, it's a little deeper than the other one, and it has more of a berry undertone to it, but it, it doesn't show up quite this color on my lips as well, unfortunately, but it's still much more manageable than the Athens one. Now this one's my favorite. Now because this one's more on the brown side, it shows up pretty well on my lips um, and I like it best. And I can get away with just using this one straight out of the tube. So that's why it's my favorite one. I picked up a lip liner from NYX. This is in the color Rose Brown and I prefer their sharpening lip liners because I feel like they last me a long time. The, the retractable ones tend to break on me while I'm applying it and I don't, that's, that's a hassle for me. So I'd rather just sharpen it instead of getting a retractable one. But that's what it looks like. It's actually a pretty deep color. It's definitely buildable and it's not like a straight up brown so it's easy to pull off. The next thing I picked up was the NYX Tame and Frame Tinted Brow Pomade. I got this in the color Espresso, and let me tell you, it is way, way, way too dark for me. The consistency of it is surprisingly creamy. I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit thicker than this. By creamy, I mean like it almost feels like an eyeliner. Um, it's super duper pigmented, and I like the formula of it. However, for my brows, this is just way too dramatic. It looks like straight up paint whenever I try using it. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to use Use this in some capacity. So these are the last two makeup products. I picked up the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the color 25 medium. I've purchased this before like a couple months ago. I do really love this concealer. If you have major dark circles though, I would suggest getting a color correcting concealer first. I'm in the market for one. I'm still struggling to find a really good one, but I do enjoy this. Last item was like a free item. I think they threw it in there as a loyalty rewards thing. I'm not actually sure. But it's the Calvin Klein One Mascara and it is in black, I believe. And this has like an interesting like brush. It's pretty long and you can twist it at the cap or to like extend it or n not. I don't know. The, the concept sounds really cool, but I don't know if it actually performs really well because... It's a weird cap, but pretty dry mascara. I prefer mine to be much more wet. I think it's good in terms of length, but I wouldn't say this is an awesome mascara for volume. Okay, so as for hair, I picked up the NYX Salon Hair Care Pro Mend Split End Binder Daily Conditioner. That is a mouthful. This one was the only one on sale at the time. I don't like the packaging. I feel like it's a hassle to squeeze it out when you're in the shower. And I don't like this particular formula. I heard, I've heard awesome things about this brand as a whole. But the Split End Mender was the only one on sale, which is why I picked it up. So if I could go back, I would probably have picked up a different formula. Because one, no product can mend your split ends. It can't heal it what it'll do is just like pretend it's split it'll kind of like glue them together bind them together but it's still damaged at the end of the day and the only way to get rid of it is to cut it all off and also I think this is a little bit on the heavy side I think if you have straight hair it's not an issue this is probably gonna be really good for you but since I have hair that tends to get weighed down very quickly and very easily I kind of struggle with this I really have to put very very little it is pretty moisturizing but I feel like it leaves residue in my hair or leaves it feeling a little bit weighed down I picked up two Butter London nail polishes. I picked up one in Trout Pout and one in Kerfruffle from Corley Pink. It's actually really pretty. I wouldn't say that this formula is out of this world amazing, especially for $15. I'm definitely glad I picked them up at $9, but even at $9, I would say it's pretty expensive and I don't know, I wasn't blown away by the formula. I'm still going to keep trying them with a different combination of base coat and top coat because I didn't find that the wear time was very good. But sometimes with that kind of thing, you need to switch things out to see what works best, if it works at all. So I am still testing these babies out. 
I also picked up a base coat, which is the one that I use on the Butter London nail polishes, and this is Essie's Protein Base Coat. So this is supposed to help your nails grow longer and stronger, and it has kind of a white tint to it. In the bottle, it looks like a straight up white polish, but on the nails, it does leave a bit of a white cast. I've been wearing this a lot underneath my nails. And I also picked up the Complete Salon Manicure Ultra Wear Top Coat, which is supposed to give you perfect nails for 10 days. I went back to drugstore top coats because I've been really struggling. I know everyone always recommends the Sachet Vite one. I don't really like it because it makes my nail polish peel off in sheets. And I was really loving this for a while there, but no matter how long I let my nails dry, like even the next day, once I apply it, it tends to drag a little bit and it'll taint the brush of the nail polish. So that's what really bothers me because I haven't had to deal with that sort of bleeding or dragging of pigment in a long time. So I'm going to use it up, but I probably wouldn't repurchase it. Is the rocks five-in-one eye cream I picked this up because my Mario Badesco one like had changed consistency it changed smell I think it's just weird so I had to toss it because I was like this is not okay to put underneath my eyes so I picked this one up instead it's only like three or four dollars more I've really been loving this it's supposed to help you with your wrinkles and dark circles and puffiness and fine lines I only really struggle with dark circles and dry under eyes which is why I picked it up for the dry nail. I would but I would still recommend this as a great under eye moisturizer Okay, you guys made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching the entire thing. I greatly appreciate it. I forgot to film an outro. But anyway, this is my previous video. If you've missed it, I show you some easy, fun, DIY, Easter, spring type of treats. So that link will be down below. And you can just click right here if you're on your computer. Otherwise, just check down below. And I'll see you guys next time with another beauty video. Bye, guys.